All right, I think we're live. Okay, welcome to Wire Wednesday number nine. Sorry about the lighting. It's set up for doing acrylic today. So that's what we're going to do today is we're going to do acrylic. And I hope it works out good. Otherwise, I'm going to have to do another setup. So I got different camera angles here. We're going to try it out. I got about six appliances I'm going to sprinkle, and I'm going to kind of walk through it as I sprinkle. So I have the chat open here to my over here, and so you should be able to see it. Be sure and ask questions. You know, as you log on and, and uh, watch this, let me know. You know where you're from, uh, where you're watching from, any questions you have again regarding acrylic uh, or anything like that. So anyway, uh, I will get started. Uh, Oh, I'm getting alerts <laughs> to my own live stream. Okay, so <clears throat> I have my setup here. And I have, like it's, again, six of these. Uh, this is all from the same doctor. They all have labial acrylic and uh, all, and they all need name inserts. So I'm going to try to insert the name without y'all seeing it. But hopefully y'all can kind of see how I do uh, my name inserts. Uh, so, man, let's get started. I'm looking at the prescription, and it says luminary blue. But let me uh, show you my camera angles here. Um, there's one. There's a front one. And then one kind of from my back rear over here. And then, of course, hi. Okay. So, this one is luminary blueberry. So I am going to open up my cabinet here. Luminary Blueberry. All right. I am right now. I'm just going to check and see. Make sure everything's streaming okay. Looks good. I think the chat is working. Here is the chat. All right, so I have my Luminary Blueberry. It is from JBC. But the very first thing I ever do, especially when there's labial acrylic, is do the labial acrylic first. I have my three monomers I use the most. Uh, we have the regular clear. We have tinted clear for that crystal clear look. And we have clear pink. So just the standard pink that a lot of doctors, um, patients get, just it blends in with the mouth. So we have, uh, so I do my labial acrylic out of tinted clear. This is has a special little bit of violet in there. Uh, if you're watching Steve Zara, um, he has a special on how to make this. I buy this pre-mixed from JBC because I'm lazy and I don't want to mix it. But if you if you want to save some money and mix it yourself, you can take some of this add some violet and you can get this color and it comes out absolutely clear. I tend to use this clear acrylic with any colored polymer because it doesn't make a difference whether you're, which one of these you use. And that helps save a little bit of money there. Alright, so I'm going to start with the labial acrylic. I've already kind of drawn it out here uh, so you can see where my dimensions are going to be. Uh, it was a big fat spring. Make sure you wax those out. So let me start with the labial acrylic. Again, I'm using my tinted clear. And I like to start with a little bit of clear. I tend to overbuild my labial acrylic for a couple reasons. One is I want to grind it down to the right shape that I want. Another reason is this is the first thing that you pour, so it's going to be the first thing that sets up. And if you have acrylic that is setting up uh, excuse me, if you have acrylic you know setting up, you'll notice you'll get porosities in, in it. So to me it sets up from the outside in. So if I if I build it thick, it will show it will those porosities and, and things from it setting up I can grind off and get to the good clean acrylic underneath. Uh, the third reason I do acrylic first, and I do it 
the reason I do it thick is if I'm using like a colored monomer, uh, it tends to stain the front as you're doing the inside here. It'll tend to stain the front acrylic and you don't want that, especially if you'd like doing cream or yellow monomer on the inside. It, t it will stain the labial acrylic, you know, green or yellow, and, you know, the patient's not going to want that. So you can see how kind of thick I'm getting it here. I won't be able to change camera angles as much as I want, but uh, you should get the idea. Now, the bottles I'm using have uh, these needles on them. Uh, and these are Boston Round plastic bottles if you want to look them up. You think you can get them on Uline.com? Uh, I got I think I got these from JBC. And some are just hand me downs. All right. So as you can see, that acrylic is pretty thick. So I'm going to work on the inside. Now, every lab's a little different. Uh, here in the state of Texas, you have to have a name insert. It's required by law. You have to have some sort of identification. So I include mine for free uh, in, in my price. But I do, I put them on the inside, the tissue side. So I, I do mine just a little bit different. And that way I do it very first and that way I don't forget about it because you'll get to do it. It's really good with designs because then you don't have to worry about trying to incorporate a name into a watermelon or whatever design you're doing. Uh, I make these with a P-Touch labeler. And cut them out. So I, I use clear with black writing letters clear with black letters and then I'd use about a seven or eight font so hopefully you can see I'll, I'll have a, that name it's on the inside so I've put a layer of clear I've set the name on top of it and I put another layer of clear so it will stand out on the inside so now I'm going to switch to my clear monomer I always Look, look what I just did. I got to talking. Look what happened. See, can you see that? It slumped on me. So I'm actually letting gravity do the job for me and pull it back down. I might be able to help with my finger. So you got to pay attention to your acrylic. That sucker slumped like crazy. So I'm just going to add, and I'm just going to cut off that excess later. I did get some to slide back down. Oh, the joys of live streaming and talking at the same time. I'm obviously not talented at it, but here you go. That's the best you get. Man, I can't believe that did that. So I'm going to leave a coat of powder on there to keep it from slumping. All right, back to the inside. You see how that, uh, these, this blue in here, and blue has a tendency to do this, the colored polymer with blue in it tends to run away from the monomer. So you gotta be careful putting your monomer down or else you're going to get that marbly look and it won't be very uh, homogeneous 
Oh, look, it's trying to slump on me again. It tells you you use too much monomer. So I tend to sprinkle mine in sections. I'll do one half, then I'll switch and do the other half, and then just tie them in together. I hope the chat's working. I don't see anybody chatting. Somebody type in there, say, it's, tell me it's working. I know uh, YouTube has upgraded the chat in these things, so hopefully it's working. So I still didn't get as homogeneous as I wanted to. You can kind of see. So I'm going to put a clear coat on top. I always tend to want to do this. There we go. I'm going to put a little layer of uh, powder to keep that from slumping on me. Alright, so now to the other side. Now, if you want, you can put, well, I like to put just a little layer of clear, just so I can see my wires when I'm trimming them from the underside. Usually you don't have a I have a hard time with that, but if you're using black or something, powder-wise, sometimes you have a hard time seeing where your wires are when you're trimming it. Again, go slow with this colored polymer. Your your pigments, your blue pigments in it, will run away from the monomer if you drip it too fast. See how it's splotching up on me? Oh, hey! It's working, John Hanlon. Thank you. Top view is a little dark. It is a little dark. It it like got darker on me. Uh, maybe on the next retainer, I'll see if I can brighten it up some. That's the bad thing with uh, acrylic. Is uh, it? You only have a certain time limit. I think it's like ten minutes before the chemical reaction starts taking place and starts setting up. So in ortho, we use stuff called cold cure. Which means it'll cure without heat, without pressure pot. It'll just it'll bench cure, but the acrylic looks ugly. So we use a pressure pot to speed up the process so it it doesn't uh, make as many air bubbles and because it's an exothermic reaction, meaning it's going to produce heat and it's going to bubble out on you. A little clear coat. I'm watching that other side. I'm making sure it doesn't slump while I'm doing this. I have to also take my finger and pat it down. Yeah, the side, Steve, the side. So, ladies and gentlemen, Steve Zara is on the chat room. He is moderating for me because my hands are full of acrylic. So he's going to be giving me tips. on. Since this is the first time we're doing acrylic live on air, he's letting me know what's working and what isn't. So I need to brighten up the top camera. All right, so now... You can see I got a little spillover right here. Now I'm going to cut this. I have my little acrylic tools here. And I just like to make it nice, sharp. You can use a barred Parker blade, you can use an uh, X Acto knife. Um, just something nice and sharp to make these acrylic cuts. I'm going to cut that slump part off. There we go. Let's do this part. weird deep mouth we got here. So I'm going to cut 
wherever your doctor prefers your cuts being made, I usually go just a little bit further back from where I'm going to trim it, give it a little extra cushion. And this this tool comes with a little scoop, so I can actually scoop out. This will just save you time trimming, but you don't want to lift up. You don't want to lift this up, otherwise it's going to distort on you a little bit. So I'm going to smooth this out a little bit. Add a little bit. You can see. Switch my camera again. You see it's starting to. I get small little crystallization going on. That means it's starting to set up on you. You gotta hurry. Got that cut. I add just a little bit of monomer to help stave off a little dusting. That's messed up right there. And I'm gonna put it in the pressure pot. for the lower. Alright, let me see if I can fix that. Oh. For some reason it's not letting me adjust this thing. So I'm, what I'm using is a, a little hood from Great Lakes that is helping um, with the fumes and it's giving me a good overhead light. So sorry if you hear noise. I've tried to position the mic where you can hear me but not the noise. There we go. I got a little brighter. Yeah, it's not much better. And I'm trying to... I thought this thing had a touch screen, but maybe it doesn't. Hi. Oh well. Alright guys, sorry. Alright, back to it straight to the labial acrylic. Again, some of these mouths are difficult. They uh, pose unique threats to your standardized acrylic acrylic techniques, I guess. Uh, see, you gotta clean up your area. I got a little speck of glitter that came out of nowhere. Probably off my finger. So I like to pat it down. I just want to make sure that I'm not getting any powder bubbles. That the monomer is completely soaking up the polymer. Oh. You can move that. My wife is joining me. She's going to help switch the cameras around since my hands are full of acrylic. Same with the front and side views.
like I said, I like to overbuild this, much to the chagrin of my wife here who has to trim it down. Can't get that to brighten up. That camera. But it's really dark. Yeah, it's a better angle. It's just I can't get it to brighten up. Uh, like I'm supposed to be able to touch the screen up there, and I can't touch it. All right. put a little bit of clear acrylic down as a padding for my name insert. I'm going to put a little drop on my name here. That tends to help because there's actually a sticky side. You got the top of my head? See how I work with it tilted? So it's yeah, it's it's hard to get a good angle with acrylic because I tend to you gotta hold it parallel with the ground because this will slump on you while you're doing it. That's the only good view. See if we can grab that one. Maybe we can put it here. Yeah. What? Oh. Oh, John Hannon. Oh, San Antonio. That is where I went to lab school, was in San Antonio. That is where my wife and I honeymooned. It was not a honeymoon. <laughs> it was not a honeymoon. I had to go back to school on Monday. The next, <laughs> We got married on a weekend. We came back and uh, went back to school on Monday. do this one is three sections so lowers I tend to do a the right in the middle and the left or I'll do I'm telling you it is hard to get good shots doing acrylic the overhead shots the best but yet the lighting is terrible So, uh, I'm trying to be as careful as I can with the monomer. I don't want to use too much. I don't want to use too little. See, it. notice it's getting wet over here. So I'm, I'm watching it, making sure it doesn't slump. Yeah, how many uh, tech owners, lab owners are watching, or, or techs, or just people that are curious? You've got too much going on. 
Now I got too many cords. Oh, here. I'll unplug it. Ah, I lost a camera. Filling it in. Starting to slump on me. Gotta get some polymer on here. Oh. Can't reach it. So, one thing that I have learned is I tend to slop this stuff on as you can tell and I've tried to teach myself the best to have a little bit of acrylic control just save so much time I think the wife has saved the overhead camera shot I'm not on it right now. Sorry. I think it might be that camera. to take the time and go what we could do is lower the the uh, tripod sounds like someone needs a second honeymoon <laughs> I'm a prosthodontist and recently got my CDT very cool I'm full time at UT too bad they closed the lab tech program yes I was very sad that they closed the lab tech program down there there's just no um, place for technicians to come from besides, you know, apprenticeship training inside someone else's lab. So, Dan Danello, OrthoTech, would hope to be lab owner. Have some time. Serbia. <laughs> wow. Now, what time is it in Serbia right now? So, I'm going to do my cuts. I got enough. Acrylic, so this is a good front shot, what I'm about to do. Front shots in this one. So I'm going to cut with my sharp knife. John, there's a... Uh, about three dentists that came out of my lab class so I, I, and they were CDTs also so I thought that was cool they came became CDTs first and then they went on to lab school I mean uh, den, dental school and uh, learned it that way and they made some extra cash on the side by doing lab training for all the dental students all their uh, dental student friends I see it's a little thin right here and I want the acrylic to go all the way so I'm gonna add a little bit right here I'm just gonna do a little bit of clear <laughs> 7 30 p.m. in Serbia but it's not too late. It's after dinner. We got someone from Algeria. What time is it in Algeria? Of course, I had to choose the hardest one to sprinkle as my first one to sprinkle. Can you see that cut?
Which one? So I'm wetting it down. I'm actually moving the acrylic just slightly with my finger. I don't want to do it too much because you'll cause porosity also. I'm trying to get an even coat, even thickness of the acrylic. Let me smooth the label of the acrylic out. Yeah. Alright, I'm going to put it in the pressure pot. Oh. And into the pressure pot. All right. So move. We got that one done. So now we're going to do this one. Here. Oh, a little bit bigger mouth. I'm going to drop this camera down. Yeah, top view is really dark. Yeah, I'm gonna to Steve. I'm gonna drop this one again, guys. This is the first experiment of doing live acrylic. Sorry for the sound. <laughs> I had more room when it was spiked up. Sorry for the sound. Got a microphone in the way now. How's that look? <laughs> Is it terrible? Views on which one I'm looking at. I guess uh. Oops. It's not so much on top anymore. But it does look brighter in here. Let's try that for this one. Alright, what color is this? Standard pink. Easy enough. Well, I'm going to do label acrylic first again. Yeah, Steve is telling us to stay with the side views. The top view is too dark. Man, you never know. Lighting is just such a art in itself in these videos. Cause in the, especially when you're using different cameras. Who knew the two cell phones I'm using on the side views produce the best video? another dental student here. Very cool. Moho? Did you say that's Moho? You can switch to that camera if you want. This one? The chat. The top of your head? Awesome, good luck. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, the top of my head while I'm <laughs> sprinkling. <laughs> Well, this lighting on here is blinding me. I'm usually be better at acrylic. But of course, since it's live. I like to make this first layer under the labial bow really wet. I want to get it. I don't want any air bubbles or anything between the labial bow and the teeth. I want to get acrylic under there. Do not want the labial bow exposed. They'll get slobber and food in there, and it'll stain. So 
So I've tried to come up with a simple way to hold my bottles um, while I do this to make it faster. And one thing I've, I've found out is I don't like them being both like this, because I or like this, because when I drag it over the powder bottle, I'll inadvertently get a drip of monomer in the tip of this and clog it. So I've learned to flip my monomer around, or I guess you could do it up there, but then it takes an extra step to flip it over in your hand. I did shave. The beard was getting unruly a little bit. So, if it's moho, I hope I'm saying that right. What, uh, how much lab do you work do you get in your dental school? I go to. Uh, the name insert. Switch to my pink. Put a layer of pink down. This one behind me probably needs to be a better angle, huh? Yeah. It's like it's compensating for all the light. I bet you a hundred bucks if I turn off all the lights, that thing will brighten up. Okay, yeah, put a little on the front here. Yeah. See, watch this. If I turn this off, did it get brighter? A little bit. But the sound got better. Hey, you're here with me. We poison each other like Romeo and Juliet. Jeez. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Alright, so I did one side and put my coat down, my coat of powder to keep it from slumping, and I move to the other side now. Uh, there's different theories of do you use monomer first or powder first. I don't know, I keep going back and forth between the two. I tend to use monomer first, but sometimes it, it probably depends on the shape of the mouth if it's gonna if it's a very vertical walls in the roof of the mouth it I tend to use monomer first but if it's a real flat mouth kinda like this one is I'll use powder first although I did use monomer so there you go It's already starting to slump over here. So I'm going to hold it upside down, let gravity do its job. Who's a talented man? Steve? Not me. <laughs> no poison. I think I should turn the vent back on. I can already smell it. There we go. So one thing I've learned from other technicians, um, the ones that really almost go too far in their sprinkling, where they want to sprinkle, 
exactly the dimensions so they don't have to trim anything. They can just trim it with an easy hand piece and that's it. I got another little piece of glitter in there, dadgummit. Where's this glitter coming from? Glitter is like herpes, man. It just keeps coming around. <laughs> So then, I'm going to slowly add monomer. But what I've learned is this dusting, where I can just dust it, you'll be surprised how much that smooths things out. Because it'll look like orange peel when it's setting up. Alright, I think I got the thickness I want. So I'm keeping my finger at the on the sizal edge to kind of keep my thickness, my width of my cut. Sometimes it works good, sometimes it doesn't. And I scrape all that away. If you do it good enough, you don't have to trim much, and you won't break as many teeth off when you go to separate this off the model. Speaking of separation, on the Facebook page, National Association of Orthodontic Laboratories, uh, somebody mentioned about how we use separator, or ask how everybody does their separator. And so mine is, I do two coats. So I do a, a preliminary coat. I uh, When I, I prep all my models first, then I'll do a coat there. And then I'll do uh, a second coat right before I start bending. So, and I'll I do a dry model. I do like soaking. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I think that pr probably produces the best results. But I usually don't have enough time to sit there and wait for it to soak. Some stones doesn't take long to to soak, but some man it'll take 30 minutes sometimes because you're you're gonna want to get all the air out of that model before you start sprinkling or else you'll start getting big bubbles in your acrylic. I'm going to take my finger and kind of smooth out. One good thing about cutting it while the acrylic's still in this stage is you can see your thickness and my thickness is decent. Put a little dusting, there we go, into the pressure pot. There you go. Can you see that? Oh. Doing my pressure pot. So along with separating, I use a, a hybrid method for curing the acrylic. Um, some put them all the way in the water and some leave them on a stand in what they call the steam method like this. I have a little coffee cup in there. And so I'll put the initial setup, I'll let them do the initial setup while it's on the coffee cup so I don't have to worry about soaking the model. But I do like to give it a good soak for the final cure. So I'll, as I do the next one, I'll put that in the water, put this on the coffee cup. And then when I do the next one, it will be set up. Uh, that's another trick I learned from another technician. We can learn so much from each other. All right, here's the lower. So the theme here is labial acrylics. Lots of labial acrylic. I hope everybody's charging enough for that because they're kind of a pain in the neck. Watch your live last week. Those are great exercises. I've been the whole song for my girlfriend, so that definitely hell of a practice for bending and fingers. <laughs> Glitters like herpes. <laughs> what brand of acrylic? Uh, well, now that you've associated it with herpes, I don't know if I want to tell you the brand of acrylic. <laughs> it's uh, JBC. 
This is the acrylic I use. If uh, y'all want to see some of the colors that I do, I've started an orthodontic appliance database. You can go to my website, designerretainer.com, and you can, uh, sorry if someone's calling me, it's Robert Jones. <laughs> Hopefully he's not watching the live stream. <laughs> So I have a, oh, my website, designerretainer.com, and you'll see right near the top a link that says uh, Orthodontic Appliance Database, and you can look on there. Uh, I think yesterday I posted a peacock glitter, did a peacock glitter, and I forgot what was the other one, a crystal blue, that was a cool one, that's probably where all this glitter's coming from. got the labial acrylic where I want it. Let's move to the inside. I put a layer of powder so it doesn't slump on me like it did the first time. If uh, you're watching, oh, I had a little accident, which is a good lesson for everybody to, you got to maintain the consistency of your acrylic while you work. Get my name insert here. See, I grabbed the powder first. So you never know what I'm going to do. I think my idea behind... Quit laughing at me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mary, are you ortho? Bitch tech? I'm reading the the uh, bench tech. No, I didn't say what you think I said. It's over, done. Move along, people. You've seen enough. If anybody has any questions about the acrylic I'm using, so I am using JBC everything. Everything's JBC. I like to keep my ordering all in one place. Uh, I have a video. If you check my, go to my channel and check it. Uh, there is an unboxing video I did of a acrylic starter kit that I got from JBC. So I've I've just started this lab. I've worked for other labs for years. Own my own lab before that. So uh, it was a great kit to get for starting. <laughs> she thought you said it too. Oh no, Mary, I wasn't calling it bench tech. I guess I gotta be careful what I say. <laughs> Glad I was here. Yeah. See, I need my wife as a sensor. I never know what I'm gonna say. Whatever comes out of my mouth. But that's what makes these videos exciting. Not the acrylic Yo, bench tech. <laughs> so, Mary, you do just dentures. That's uh, so you're used to the smell. Do you use any kind of hood, or you know, just any kind of uh, thing to get the vapors out? Overhead hood, or my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let your daughter watch this show. That's what I get for mumbling.
does anybody uh, sprinkle like I do in sections? Um, or I, the lab I came from, they would sprinkle the whole retainer. It was a, a very unique dance of balancing and having to hold. See, it's already it's getting shiny, meaning it's trying to slump on me. Notice I'll put a little powder on there. I'll come back in a little bit. Most of that powder will be gone because it will soak up exactly... It, the powder can only soak up so much monomer. Usually the ratio is about two powder to one monomer. There we go. Now I'm going to do the, the middle section here. Always keeping an eye on the labial acrylic. Keep my area clean. Yes, the smell. It's my perfume. <laughs> An old bench text perfume. <laughs> Stop saying that now. Bench tech. <laughs> so, Mary, now you got to get the uh, the URL. So, my lab URL, instead of .com, I chose .tech. So now you should go get bench.tech as your URL for your website. So use a Vanneman system? Oh, is that with the... Um, hi, Frank from France is here. Good evening, everyone. Is it 7.30 over there? Like your fitness. Like everybody else? So I've, I think I've looked at that Vanderman system. For those that are just joining us, Steve Zar is in the chat. He's being my moderator today since my hands are full of acrylic. Do a little dusting. Does anybody use gloves to do acrylic? Mary? Man, Frank, military time. <laughs> now you gotta make me do math. What is that? What's 9.54? That's nine hours past 12. No, that's not right. See, I'm a I'm a lab tech. So Mary doesn't use gloves. I don't either. I, they get in the way. I've heard of some people having some pretty bad allergic reactions to acrylic, um, even after doing it for 20 years. So I hope that didn't ever happen to me. It's like they have it once, a real bad chafing or splitting and cracking. It's like they have that allergic reaction once, and they get over it, and then they're, you know, immune to the... 7.55? Oh, thanks. <laughs> Frank, are you military? Is that why I did the military time? Military background? Yeah, Sarah. Oh man, I just slipped. Hey Mary, do you press pack? No glove. <laughs> no glove. Oh, I'm gonna <laughs> keep my tongue tied. No glove. No love. I still said it. Um, do you press pack or pour? Or, um, how do you do your dentures? I don't know if you do much with cold cure like this stuff.
they even got these acrylic tools from JBC. They, uh, I think they're just clay sculpting tools. You probably find them at art supplies, but I had just ordered them because I was putting in an order anyway, and she has them in stock. Ah, I see a little thin spot here. I don't know if you can see that. So I like the thickness here. But I got a little thin spot, so I'm going to add a little bit of acrylic there. I'm doing this backwards, hopefully, so you're going to see it. And I do light dusting. If you watch that, it'll, you can see that monomer soak in. Lucitone 199. I do both press and repairs mostly. Pour with full dentures. Oh. I thought it'd be the other way around. You'd pour with repairs, but... Those denture techs, they're good with wax, too. They, I've seen some amazing dentures in the magazines. Mary, have you heard of Tom Zaleski? He's putting on a... a denture waxing slash festooning that's a fancy word for you uh, at our conference in April a lot of people are excited about it alright so that's ready for the pressure pot so to continue my theme I'm going to move the camera so this is a Great Lakes pressure pot I like it because it's all in one. It, it's got the heater at the bottom. Uh, and I like that it will maintain the pressure. I've made my own pressure pots in the past. Yeah, don't laugh. They've exploded in my face before. So I like having a one that's made for this. Yeah. Uh, give those first one my wife, she's going to start trimming on them. So I'll say a good 10 minutes. This only goes up to 19 PSI. I'd love to have it go up to 22, but and i got to fix that regulator that's on it. But a good thing I like about this is it constantly maintains this pressure the whole time. So if you, if a seal goes it just constantly adds more air uh, as it so you don't lose pressure all right last two and these are gonna be fun all right upper is blue pearl I'm gonna do my camera again I'm gonna move my upper camera again Oh, the lamps here now. So here's my. Can y'all see that? Oh, you want this? Yeah. Here is my um, my acrylic cabinet here with all my colors for JVC. I'm sorry, the lights poor. I got all the lights pointing in the other direction. So I am. This is blue pearl that I'm doing. So I need to do. Luminary chartreuse. This one, which is pretty much just glow. I'm still here. I'm just fixing my camera back. Oh! I might have fixed the brightness on here.
ょう Tom Zusky has a YouTube channel demonstrating denture techniques and products. Yep. Oh, cool, Frank. You get to you're showing some of your appliances at Dentarum headquarters. Oh, my conference is uh, it is in Grapevine, Texas, so it's real close to Dallas. So uh, you can go to dlat.org. Let me put it here. That. Not take dlat.org. It is not showing it. it. Doesn't let you do links. That's stupid. Okay. <laughs> now I was trying to do. Here, I'll type it here. If you go there to that site, it will. Uh, It'll take you, you can get more information on the conference. But I'm putting a whole big ortho two day event on. You're going to change it? Yeah. The top one is Blue Pearl. All right, so labial acrylic again. Again, I like to get that first level first layer wet so it gets underneath that labial bow. It's very important that you maintain the tips of your mod your polymer bottles so that you can almost just draw with it right where you want it to land. It's a little different than dentures where you pre-mix this stuff. This is a but well, I guess when you do repairs they have horse parking. All Steve said they have horse parking also. Who does? Steve. Who has horse parking? At our Texas event. You're lost. At Greenland? Yeah. He's making fun of Texas. Because oh. we, you know, we brought our horses to school and stuff. Yeah. They actually, honestly, they did have a horse area behind the <laughs> behind the hotel, <laughs> the Grapevine. It's a uh, Grapevine Lakes that they have an Austin Ranch, and right across from it, they had a, a horse ranch area, and you go ride horses. So that's not too far from the truth. A head on a stick. You know, my parents did actually, they have horses. And the little small town I lived in, they used to ride their horse to, they, it was called the Wagon Wheel. It was a an old school diner. And they would actually tie up their horses outside the diner, go inside and eat, and then ride their horses home. It was a good five miles, I guess. And they're just riding along the side of the road. It's a very, very uh, common sight around here people riding their horses down the side of the road. Their horses have to be very well trained and not spooked easy or else you'll see something funny while you're driving.
All right, I'm going to show you all this one. Uh, so this is a polymer color. So I need to put my... Sorry, you didn't lose me. I lose my train of thought sometimes. I call it my stutter. So when you put the name on the tissue side, you have to think about the way it's going to be read. So you actually got to put it in backwards and upside down. Um, but once you get used to doing it that way. Trying to get that name to get in there. There we go. All right, so this is Blue Pearl. Oh, look, it's trying to slump on me again. This is one of my favorite. We ride snowmobiles in the town. Oh, my parents own a cabin in the, in the woods. And they have snowmobiles. Snowmobiles are so much fun. Yeah, in the mountains. Alright, so this is Blue Pearl. Check this out. Might need to choose a bit better camera angle. Yeah, it, it brightened up a little bit. It's better up here than up here. <laughs> yeah, it's like when you, we go to preview it, it's dark. I mean, it's bright, but then you put it on the live. And I guess I gotta watch this back later on. So check this out. I love those sparkles in there. And so she sells, uh, uh, what are the colors? Lavender and yellow, pink, yeah. So I like to put a clear coat over my glitters and sparkles. I, I just, that just sounds silly, but <laughs> a clear coat over anything with sparkly in it, and uh, that way it, it really does shine, kind of like you would do in a car. This will be my last one. Alright, I'm going to put a little bit of... Uh, Yeah, it's starting to slump on me over here. So this polymer tip is actually really good. I've seen um, some of those Instagram, uh, maybe the one that Steve featured on his Instagram, the, the one lady from Chechnya, I think, that does beautiful work. She has metal tips on her polymer bottles. I need to get some of those because they, they obviously won't wear out on you or um, it look like you get more consistent flow, gives you more room to do more artistic designs. anybody's got any thank you Sarah for your help let's even get a close-up if not no worries all right let's see if I get a close-up of this the lighting is so bad on this I'm so disappointed in this camera
Where'd that come from? What the heck? Ah, oh, see, it won't pay attention. It, uh, it really, you really got to pay attention. Can't get distracted like I did changing camera angles. Throws you off your whole game. Oh, I'd be interested in what she's using in her flower for her appliance, Frank. Czech Republic. Martina. Yeah, find her on Instagram. She she's putting some really. Or, uh, if you're already friends with Steve, look at his on Instagram. Look at his, and uh, you can probably find her there. Make sure my blade is clean. Nail decoration art. I'll send you. Pi yeah, send pictures. I haven't decided on what de decals I want to offer, but they're a really neat money maker. Kids love them, and if you get good ones that don't dissolve in the monomer. They're really easy to put in. Pressure pot. Uh, thank you all. I'm going to end it there. Thank you all for tuning in and, and uh, hope y'all got something out of it. And I apologize for all the uh, camera issues we had. I'll try to work on those, but uh, thanks for putting up with me. Thanks for Steve Zara to help in the chat room to keep things active and going as, a, as I found out I can't sprinkle acrylic and talk at the same time very well. And my wife is laughing at me. And if she doesn't stop laughing, I'm going to put her on camera. <laughs> Alright, well I'm going to sign off. Thank you all. 
and I'll see you next week for the Wire Bending Wednesday.